Hello, hi, good evening, everybody. Hope you guys are doing wonderful. I'm Kalyan here from Skorli from Bangalore. Um, I'm here today with another session where focus, focusing essentially on uh, reading comprehension. Reading comprehension is still a very daunting process for a lot of people, right? And I mean, there are many, many people are still struggling, you know, getting even a 50% accuracy on reading comprehension. Right, so normally you get around what 11 to 13 questions in reading comprehension, right? And getting what even 50 percent sometimes can get very, very challenging, right? So, in one of the earlier sessions, I've spoken about the fire approach, wherein we said we do the framework of the passage to begin with, and then we interpret the question, we react to the question, and then we eliminate the answer choices. These are the four steps that we follow uh, for reading comprehension. And the FIRE approach has been extremely uh, powerful and has been useful for many, many students in getting over 90% accuracy in reading comprehension within ease, all right? So this strategy is predominantly based on how can we read and comprehend a little, all right? How can we read and comprehend a little? right but spend a good amount of time on answering the question and get it right right because the whole whole philosophy is based on um you know you don't get you don't get time you don't get score for reading and comprehending the passage right you get the score for answering the question right so i want you to guys to spend more time on answering the question than simply reading and comprehending the passage the beauty about the GMAT is you really don't have to understand. You really don't have to understand every single detail mentioned in the passage, right? You really don't have to understand. You really need to understand only those elements, right? Only those elements or only that information which will help you to answer the questions. But quite unfortunately, you cannot see all the questions uh, up front. You can only see the first question. Is it not right? And I, I, I more often than less, I hear from the students saying that Kalyan passages were, you know, pretty ugly. They are pretty daunting. Uh, just unable to understand. Exactly. That's how the GMAT is going to be, right? You know, getting a seven hundred is not an easy thing. Still, seven hundred is ninety percentile. Is it not? Which means only ten of the hundred students who take GMAT gets seven hundred and above right so therefore they will make it complicated but however how can we understand gmat from the gmat point of view right the idea is here is not to really have a great reading skills or the idea is not here to comprehend everything the idea here is to understand the gmat from the gmat point of view right and maximize or optimize your accuracy you understand what i'm saying one thing that you should always keep in your mind, guys, you know, one of the things that I always see is, no, you know what, I want to get every single question right. Stay out of that thing. You cannot get every single question right for now. Okay, let us first hit 700. I know a lot of people who are struggling with 500, 540, 600s. Now, let's first hit that 650 or 680 on a 700 barrier. Once we hit that 700, then we can discuss about how else we can go and focus on uh, <clears throat> okay oh okay am i live <clears throat> You guys can hear me? Am I live? I'm just trying to check. Uh, okay, sorry, sorry for this one interruption here. So, uh, <clears throat> what I was telling, right? So, essentially, you know, we wanted to get everything right. Let's not do that first. Let's first hit that 700, and then we will work on how can we go to that 730, 740, or 750 zone, right? In fact, as I keep telling in all the sessions, Maybe your target school is not even looking at 740, 750. Your target school wants you to hit a 680 or 700 or 710. Let's first hit that. 
So therefore, get out of that thing of saying that I want to get every single question right. No, that should not be the attitude. The attitude is how can I maximize my accuracy? How can I optimize the whole thing? Right? What should my approach so that I, given the time, given what I can do, how can I maximize my score? So that's how the focus is going to be. So what I'm going to do today with you is I'm going to pick up one of the hard passages. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> show you too how can we implement this fire approach where we read and understand a little, but we spend good amount of time in answering the question and get maximum of those questions correct, right? Without trying to understand too many details and too many intricacies or too many specifics of the passage, how can we maximize our score? That's what the intention is. Okay, wonderful. So let's begin this. So please, there is this uh, file I want you guys to download. Please download that. Okay, there is a passage which I'm going to talk about. This it's about historians' passage. Historians sometimes forget that the history is continuously being made and things like that. So please download that. Okay, that's a passage we'll be doing, and the questions from the passage we'll be doing. It's considered one of the hard passages by the GMAT Club and by the MBA.com as uh, as well. Okay, so let us see how to go about doing the uh, questions from the passage by implementing the fire approach. F I R E. Okay, fire. F, basically, fire stands for F stands for the framework of the passage. I stands for interpret the question. R stands for react to the question, and E stands for eliminate the wrong answer choices. So let us see how to do that. Okay, the first and the foremost thing I'm going to show you how to do the framework of the passage okay what exactly is the framework framework is basically we are talking about the skeleton structure of the passage right not the nomenclature of the passage the storyline to be in more simple terms okay so let's start doing that now first let us read the first sentence of the first paragraph and try to understand and try to create a framework of it the first sentence of the first paragraph says that historians sometimes forget that the history is continually being made and experienced before it is studied, interpreted, and read. Okay, so what is it trying to say? The first paragraph it says that historians, historians forget. What they forget? They forget that the history is continuously made, right, and experienced and experience before it is studied and interpreted right before it is studied interpreted right and read right okay that's what the first and is the first paragraph is saying and these later activities have their own history of course which may impinge in unexpected ways on public events basically the history is continuously made that's what the first paragraph is all about right and then let's go to the second paragraph. The second paragraph, it says it is difficult to predict when new past will overturn established historical interpretations and change the course of history. The first sentence of every paragraph is important, right? So they're saying that it is difficult to predict what? When this new past will basically overturn and change the history or the established facts, right? Established historical interpretations. Okay, now then they said in fall of 1954, for example, then they started giving an example in the fall of 1954, for example, example is a very general keyword. It can be there in any passage regardless of the nature of the passage, right? Okay, for example, in 19, 1954, for example, in the fall of 1954, this guy who C. Wayne Woodward, okay, C. Wayne Woodward delivered the lecture series. He gave what? He gave lecture series, okay, at the University of Virginia that challenged, what did he do? He challenged, okay, he challenged. Okay, he challenged the prevailing dogma concerning the history, continuity and uniformity of racial segregation in the South. And then he argued, he not only challenged, but he argued, he argued that Jim Crow laws 
of the late 19th and uh, early 20th century not only codified traditional practices but also were determined continued effort to raise considerable progress made by the black people so he is talking about he argue that these jim crow laws are not so good right jim crow laws are not good right then <clears throat> further he went on to say that uh the 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 revisionist view of jim crow legislation grew in part from the research that woodward had done for the naacp legal campaign during his preparation for brown versus board of education and this is too specific this is too specific technicality here right so we don't really don't have to understand at this point in time we know that when uh the woodward challenged and argued on jim crow laws he said that they are bad that's it okay when the question comes on it i know a way to come and find my answers at this point in time i really don't want to read and interpret the whole lot of details just stay outside from those details and then the supreme court has issued a ruling in its focal desegregation case a few months before uh woodward lectures so the supreme court has issued a ruling just before the lectures right supreme court has issued a ruling before the lectures before he gave these lectures right that's it okay that's the second paragraph and then that's not all we have a third paragraph let us see what is there in third paragraph in third paragraph it says the lectures were soon published as a book the strange career of jim crow so these lectures whatever that we're talking about here these lectures were published as book okay this lecture is published as book the strange career of jim crow okay the strange career of jim crow and then look at this 10 years later in the preface to second revised edition woodward confers his ironic modesty that the first edition had begun to suffer some kind of handicaps that might be expected in the history that might be expected in the what that might be expected in the history of american revolution published in 1976 right which is not even part of right so take a look at this so he is saying that 10 years later when 10 years later sorry my mistake 10 years later right he is saying that who this this wayne woodward guy the the woodward guy in his second edition he is saying that you know what actually there is some kind of a problem there is some kind of a problem this, this book suffered some handicap there is some kind of a a problem with this book that's it we don't have to understand the nuances of it we'll come back to it when a question is asked on this okay and then he says this was a bit like hearing thomas paine apologize for the timing of his pamphlet common sense see this is then they are he is doing a comparison you see that word like this whole thing is like the thomas paine thing they brought in another character called thomas paine who is saying sorry he is apologizing uh what is it say for the timing of the pamphlet common sense okay for the timing of whatever the pamphlet he is talking about the common sense okay which he had a comparable impact although common sense also had a mass readership pain had intended to reach and inspire he was not an historian and thus not concerned with accuracy of dangers of historical anachronism let's not break our head to understand what it is trying to say okay let's move forward yet like again they use the word yet and they also use the word like right it like pain woodward so what is that we understand here yet like pain woodward see there is a comparison is happening right pain versus woodward and it is more of similarities here right it like pain woodward had an unerring sense of revolutionary movement and of how the historical evidence could undermine the mythological tradition that was crushing the dreams of social possibilities so basically there is a comparison of pain to woodward let us not try to understand what is the detail of it okay we will come back to it when there is a question asked on it if there is a question about tell me what is the difference or what are the similarities between pain and woodward we know where to come and find our answer is it not we really don't have to understand at this point in time you get what i'm saying 
right very very important you really don't have to get into the intricate details of the passage when you are doing the basic framework framework is to understand the pointers framework is to create a basic structural map to understand the story line okay great and then it says that martin luther king jr testified to a profound profound effect of the strange career of jim crow that's a book that that i has written on the civil rights movement by praising the book and quoting it frequently so basically what happened in the end this martin luther king said book is great book was great martin luther king jr said wow book was amazing book is good right he praised the book that's it okay and quoting it frequently right so it actually ended in a very well thing though the author of this particular passage started criticizing or started saying dude what are you trying to do and in the end he said that actually martin luther king said the book is great right so it ended in a nice uh, you know good feeling kind of a stuff right okay that's how the framework of the passage needs to be done right keep it keep it very simple we are not really trying to understand the intricacies we are not really trying to understand the internal details we are not trying to understand the story we know the story line that's it historians forget something right and it is difficult to predict about the 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 things right and they again they gave an example example was the the way in the uh, lecture series where he challenged and he argued that the jim crow laws are bad right and then he not only did that but he published a book he published a book and then 10 years later he said oh i'm so sorry there is some mistake in the book and then the author of this particular passage said he is saying sorry is like is like uh, you know thomas paine saying the sorry for his stupidity however what in the end all is well remember the stories always should end well most of the stories do end well they all end in a happy ending so that's what is also ended right martin luther king says hey book is great man it's a pretty, pretty cool book right keep it this simple now with this kind of a simple understanding let us see how to go about answering the questions here okay right so i may give you a minute time for you guys to copy it down if any of you guys are writing it down uh, i'll give you a minute uh, 30 seconds to quickly write it down but otherwise okay right <clears throat> right always look for a story line always look for a story line looking for a story line things can become a lot more easier and simpler for you to answer than otherwise guys okay reading comprehension is a muscle for your verbal score okay if you can get good accuracy in reading comprehension your score will shoot up okay i'm not saying this is the only factor that will help your verbal score improve but this is the most important factor among all the three sections sentence correction reading comprehension and critical reasoning reading comprehension uh, is a muscle right okay you want to boost your verbal score reading comprehension will help you that okay but unfortunately reading comprehension uh, takes time okay so your timing strategy should be according to that okay right your timing strategy should be according to that where you will give good amount of time for reading comprehension reading comprehension is like an open book test if you try uh, to follow the approach and implement it there's a high chance that you can get around 80 to 90% accuracy right if you manage to get that you can have a very good verbal score okay guys okay now let us see how to answer the questions based on this right so let's take a look at the first question here right framework as i said it's not that i'm going to refer to the framework or anything framework will give you a general idea okay i will refer to this i'll try to use this framework as much as possible but it'll help me understand what is the flow what happened where where is what i will know right now let us see how to answer the questions based on this okay the first question it says the new past mentioned in line number 6 can be described as oh great this is a line reference question okay when you say line reference equation so basically you will not get any more line reference equation instead uh, that particular text will be highlighted new pass will be highlighted new pass is there in the uh, <clears throat> beginning of the second paragraph okay in the beginning of the second paragraph the very first sentence okay that talks about new pass now let us see what is that we know about the new pass okay a b c d e make sure that you write this okay and then so this is the i part right we are doing this is the i framework is done that is f 
this is the i and now we are going to the react part let's see how to react to the question okay so i'm going to go there and read it i know where the new past is now because they already gave a line reference i'm going to go there and read it once again to understand exactly what is trying to say and i create a diagram diagramming is most important okay we need to create a diagram which means to say that i'm not trying to store anything in my mind i'm going to put that in the paper if there is anything that can you know create a trouble in the exam that's your mind because mind will not be able to intercept so much of information and store it it's pretty volatile and keep replacing right so we don't want to rely too much of mind instead okay we'll try to put that on the paper there are few people who can but we are not talking about a few people we are talking about test takers in general okay so let's take a look at it what is it says it is difficult to predict when the new past new past we are talking about new past will overturn established historical interpretation new past will over turn what historical established sorry established established what historical interpretation historical interpretations okay historical interpretations and change and change the course of history and change course of history okay so this is what i have written now i'll go to my answer choices and eliminate any answer choices that is not fitting into my diagramming part okay now let us see how to eliminate the answer choices okay so let's go to answer choices answer choice a says that the <clears throat> answer choice a occurrence of events extremely similar to past events no we are not talking about extremely similar extremely by itself is a super extreme word throw that out and then answer choice b says history of activities of studying interpreting and reading new historical writing that's in the first paragraph it's got nothing to do with this so we knock it off you see that it is mentioned in the past somewhere but that's not what is answering the question that's the reason you need to react and create a diagram once you do that you compare your answer choice with this guy and keep eliminating b is gone okay now let us go to answer choice c answer choice c says changing in people's understanding of past due to more recent historical writing maybe we will keep it because you're talking about change in people's understanding so we're talking about change and uh, okay we'll keep that guy let's go to answer choice d overturning of established historical uh, interpretations but politically motivated polit politicians we are not talking about politicians here so that is out answer is e says difficulty of predicting when a given historical interpretation will be overturned no that's not what we talking about we are saying new past basically overturn established historical interpretation and change the course of history right so therefore e is gone c is the clear answer we clearly says understanding is nothing but the interpretation you see that okay if you diagram it correctly you will be able to arrive at the answer just like that you understand what i'm saying okay right okay then <clears throat> let us go to the next question let's see how to answer the second question okay second question is slightly difficult question okay and it is super easy to misinterpret the answer choices it is super easy to uh have a very uh, what do i say uh, a different kind of an understanding when you look at it. it's a very 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 good question i would say uh let's go to this question it says that it can be inferred from the passage that the prevailing dogma okay it is talking about the prevailing dogma held that okay what is prevailing dogma now right again this is a line specific question so i know where exactly to go right it's again in the prevailing dogma is in the second paragraph in the uh, at the vain word thing right it says that for example vain word delivered a lecture series at the university of virginia uh, virginia that challenged the prevailing dogma right okay that's where our answer is now let's read that and understand what is trying to say challenge the prevailing dogma concerning the history continuity right so vain word word vain word what did he do he challenged 
he challenged the prevailing dogma what is that prevailing dogma concerning history continuity and uniformity uniformity of racial segregation in the south in addition he also argued right he also argued that jim crow laws jim crow laws sorry i lost it jim crow laws of late 19th century and 20 and early 20th century is not only codified jim crow law not only codified the traditional practices not only codified traditional practices but also a determined effort to determined effort to raise determined effort to erase erase considerable progress made by the black people considerable considerable progress by black people right so basically when woodward is trying to say that he 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 said this is this is not so correct because he challenged this prevailing dogma i don't agree with that right that's a prevailing dogma and he said that the jim crow laws are are not actually helping they are not helpful right this is what he's saying so let us see what exactly the answer choice is trying to say okay now let's go to answer choice a answer choice a says that jim crow laws were passed to give legal status to well established discriminatory practices in south we are talking about discriminatory practices in south racial segregation in the south so we'll keep it for now answer choice b says jim crow laws were passed to establish order and uniformity in discriminatory practices we are talking about uniformity also so i'll keep the answer choice for now answer choice c says jim crow laws was passed to erase social no that is not the prevailing dogma jim crow laws were not passed to erase social gains that black people had had achieved since reconstruction no and in fact if you look at the passage it says during and after reconstruction it is not since reconstruction number 1 number 2 again what is very important for you guys to understand here is what is the prevailing dogma right so it is vain of what you saying that it is vain of what you saying that jim crow laws are bad they actually meant to uh, erase the progress made by the black people who is saying that vain of what they are not prevailing dogma prevailing dogma is this okay right so that is history continuity and uniformity of racial segregation in the south and things like that right that there is a discrimination so answer to c is gone that is according to woodward right that is not the prevailing dogma he challenges the prevailing dogma right so therefore c is gone answer to d the continuity of racial segregation in the south was disrupted by the passage no 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 it is not disrupted is it not we are not talking about being disrupted jim crow laws of late 19th century and early 20th century were passed to reverse the effect of earlier jim crow laws no there is no reversal happening that's gone so technically we are left with answer choices a and b now which one is wrong here now if you look at answer choice b it says jim crow laws was passed to establish order and uniformity in discriminatory practices of different southern states different southern states we don't know in south we know yes in south it is there but different southern state i don't know what exactly it's talking about are the practices are different in different southern states or is the same thing it's kind of confusing so that should not be the answer that's gone hence a is the appropriate answer right so that's how we got to it okay so you need to understand the dynamism of the passage you need to know exactly where the twist and the turn is right where the twist and the turn is when it would challenge the prevailing dogma right in according to him the history continuity and uniformity of racial segregation in the south you know is not there that much and in fact he is trying to say that jim crow laws are bad right that is his point of view but the prevailing dogma says that past there is this continuity and uniformity of racial segregation there is a segregation there is a discriminatory practices in the south that is one the jim crow is saying the jim crow laws were trying to focus on right that's the reason those laws have been formulated essentially during his time okay great so that's how the answer should be drawn okay very very important okay on jim maclab i see a lot of people have selected answer to c 
uh, getting confused with the question here. You need to understand it is not what Bain Woodward thinking, it is what is the prevailing dogma. Okay, right? Very important. <clears throat> you know, I always tell uh, students, you know, when you are trying to do the passages, right, your focus, as I said, again, it is very important and your focus, as I said, is to understand the GMAT from the GMAT point of view, how the wordings are twisted, how the question is twisted. Right, you need to understand that when you're practicing passages, right? Don't blindly practice to see how many questions you get right, how many questions you get wrong, what is the timer, and all those things. Yes, that is important. But what is very important is to understand the GMAT psychology. You need to know how does GMAT think, okay? And you need to think in that particular direction. There is no right and there is no wrong way, there is only one way that is GMAT way. Right. So you need to spend substantial amount of time analyzing it. That's something which I don't see that many of us doing it. Right. When you if you spend about half an hour doing a passage of six questions, you are spending another half an hour to 45 minutes analyzing it, understanding how the passage is structured, understanding from where the questions have been taken. Right. So that will give you uh, uh, a very good insight of what portions of the passage are uh, very, very, really important, what portions are not important. Right. And then look at the answer choices. Answer choices are always designed in a very different manner. Right. They are never direct. Right. They are very, more often than less, the correct answer choice is uh, in a convoluted format. Right. And the wrong answer choice is so, so super direct that you actually fall in love with the wrong answer choice. And the correct answer choice, you can't even understand. Like, I don't know what this nonsense trying to say. This should be wrong. You knock it off, right? Remember, do not eliminate an answer choice if you don't understand. In RC, that is one most important tip here. If you don't understand the answer choice, keep it. You never know that's a correct answer. Focus on elimination rather than selection. Try not to see which one is correct. Focus on which ones are wrong, okay? If you are able to comfortably eliminate the answer choices, the one that is left out is the correct answer. Right. See, what is important at the end of the day is, you know, whether you got that, you know, 700 and above, nobody is going to question you after you get 730, 740. You remember the GMAT question? Tell me how did you do it? OK, right. We are doing this test because because I uh, because P schools want this. I hear this for some of the students. They say, Kilian, I have everything in my profile, man, everything in my profile. It's just one this GMAT has become pain. Right. So that has become pain because you are putting on too much of analytical, logical, whole bunch of reasoning in it. Great. I mean, you should have that. It is imperative uh, to have that. But here, GMAT. GMAT, I need a score. I am not here to become expert in English, to become expert in reading, to become expert. No, I'm here to get a damn score. Get me that 730, 740, which my B school wants. I will want it to be done with it. Okay. That's how the focus should be. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you try to approach the exam with that kind of a focus, it is it will be convenient for you to maximize your score. Okay, right? While the reasoning, understanding, all those things are great, but GMAT, you know, GMAT is a different kind of an exam. Right, right. You have everything in your profile. GMAT is the one thing that is stopping you. Because of that, you get rejected. Is that a fair thing to do? No, right. Unfortunately, we need the GMAT score as well. B schools are asking for it. If the B schools are not asking, I remember last year so many B schools have given waiver for GMAT, right? A lot of students have applied. Correct? No, I don't know if you have if you have gone through the article. I'll try to share that. In fact, uh, uh, the the average GMAT scores has kind of come down, uh, you know, uh, for most of the B schools compared to the previous years because you know some of the B schools have uh, accepted candidates without the GMAT scores. Right. So the B schools are not asking for it. We don't even have to take it because the B schools are asking for it. We are taking it. Okay. Right. So be smart. Be smart to attack this exam. It is. It is not very difficult, but yes, it is tricky to manage this and, and hit a fantastic score. Okay. So follow the approach. 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 Approach matters a lot. Approach matters a lot. Don't get distracted, debated, and most important thing, don't use your knowledge to answer the questions, make sure that you stick to what is mentioned in the passage. Okay, and create the diagramming. If you see for all the questions, I created this diagramming. Okay, this is called react part. I'm spending time here. This is what the big A is. I'm spending time here. Because if I answer the question and I get it right, I get a score. 
instead of spending time on reading and comprehending the passage in the first place and i get stuck at some portions where i just don't understand instead of doing that let us spend time on answering the questions maybe even uh, maybe you may not even get a question from that you know stupid looking paragraph which is so difficult to understand you may not even get question but if you are sticking to reading and comprehending the passage then you will actually forget to answer the questions you will not have time for that right the focus on answering the question then simply reading and understanding the passage okay great now let's go to the next question let's go ahead and read the next question this is what the uh, second question we did now let's go to the third question and see what we got question number 3 okay so which of the following is the best example of writing that is likely to subject to the kinds of handicaps refer to line 31 very good the most of this question in this passage are line reference right so we can easily identify them right so you're talking about you know handicap right handicaps whatever it is right uh, a kind of handicap that we're talking about so how do you approach this question now this is slightly different this is an analogy kind of a question right you know this is not this is not a straight forward answer this is an analogy kind of a question so you need to understand what exactly happened so i should draw an analogy let's understand that okay if you talk about a handicap which is in line number 31 which is actually in the third paragraph if you guys notice there that there is a third paragraph and you see that it says had begun to suffer under some of the handicaps right so in 10 years later in preface to second revised edition woodward confesses with ironic modesty uh, that the first edition had begun to suffer under some of the handicaps that might be expected in the history of american revolution published in 19 sorry 1776 so the american revolution happened in 1776 and Dwayne Woodward is writing the book in is 1954, right, or somewhere around that time. Correct, no? And he is not even a part of this American Revolution. He is just a historian. He is not even part of. He is not part of American Revolution at all. And he is writing about that something like that doesn't make sense. So you are looking for an answer choice where things are not connected. Things are not related directly. Okay, things are not related directly. All right let us see which answer choices show that now let's go to the answer choices the answer choice a says that history of auto manufacturing plan written by employee during auto booming uh, auto buying booming so about auto manufacturing plan auto employee written that is fine correct no automobile auto manufacturing plan written by employee written by the same employee so they are connected right uh so that's not the answer a critic of state wide school desegregation plan written by elementary school teacher in the in that stage perfect again school to school teacher connected again right school to school teacher connected again great c a newspaper article assessing the historical importance of united states president written shortly after president has taken office a newspaper article talking about president guys a newspaper guy a newspaper guy who is not in not related to any kind of politics per se he is writing about president see that is not connected here there is something similar to this so we'll keep this guy for now answer choice d says scientific paper describing the benefits of certain surgical technique written by a surgeon who developed the technique perfect surgical technique written by a surgeon connected great a diary entry is narrating the events of battle written by the soldier who participated in the battle again connected right we are talking about a battle diary is written by a soldier right again connected you see that so which one is not connected here answer choice c therefore that should be the correct answer right you know i hear a lot of people like hey i don't even understand what is trying to ask you don't have to understand when you look at the answer choices you see that all the answer choices are connected except one standing and odd man out pick that and move out don't break your head there right understand that's what i'm saying this is more of a psychological exam just simply an exam of your reasoning you need to understand when you go to the market tomorrow you need to understand your customer 
right you need to you need to quickly understand assess your customer and change accordingly there is no right way and there is no wrong way nokia was number one they were right and suddenly they disappeared then became they wrong so tell me which one is right which one is wrong you understand what i'm trying to say right we need to adapt to the market therefore we need to adapt to gmat here understand the gmat from the gmat point of view things will become much simpler and easier you understand what i'm trying to say okay it's a mind game right you need to tune your mind to think the way the gmat thinks if you can achieve that then your rc will become gentle breeze okay if you can manage to get a good accuracy in rc as i said that will really you know increase your score significantly okay great <clears throat> now <clears throat> let us take a look at the next question 132 uh or is that an official guy actually otherwise we are talking about the fourth question from your uh, the document that your guys are using so the passage suggests that the c van woodward and thomas paine were similar in all of the following ways except yeah cool so you see that this guy is talking about woodward similarities between woodward and thomas paine now since the question is asked on it i will go there now to understand just imagine if this question was not there so i don't even have to understand correct no about thomas woodward i mean thomas paine and the vein woodward i didn't even have to understand the similarities between these guys if the question was not even there but now there is a question i know where to go and find my answer you remember here we have spoken about the comparison we wrote like twice and here we're talking about comparison so let us read this whole part here and understand what exactly that they're trying to say now because there is a question on it i want to understand and remember this question is an accept question right so what i will do i will knock off accept and see which of the following are actually similarities right and whichever answer choice shows a similarity i'll put a yes beside it and which is not showing similarity i'll put a no and that would be my correct answer okay now let us go back to the passage and read it to understand what it is trying to say guys let's see okay so where is that it's in the third paragraph towards the uh, actually in the in the middle right so let's see what it said so this that was a bit like hearing thomas Paine apologize for timing of his pamphlet common sense so i'm going to write that down thomas Paine said sorry for the timing okay for the timing of his pamphlet what was that common sense okay common sense which had a comparable impact this has a comparable comparable impact right it has a comparable impact although com sorry common sense also had a mass readership common sense had mass readership readership okay as mass readership um pain had intended to reach and inspire pain this guy was to reach and inspire he was not an historian so this guy is he is not an historian he says that hey you know what i am not an historian okay and thus not concerned with accuracy or dangerous of historical anachronism so i don't care about the timing i am not concerned about the historical anachronism correct historical anachronism okay that's what he's trying to say great and then not not yet done it says yet like pain okay it like pain woodward had a nearing sense of revolutionary movement like pain woodward also had a sense of revolution had a nearing sense of revolutionary movement they had a great sense of revolutionary movement okay and how historical evidence could determine uh could sorry could undermine the mythological tradition that was crushing the dreams of social possibilities so also understand about this historical evidence stuff right now let us go to the answer choices and eliminate uh put a put a put a yes beside everything that is here and no 
decide that is not uh, the exact comparison between Thomas Paine and Wo uh, uh, Woodward or similarity. Okay, so let's do that. In answer to his A says, both works published in the midst of historical events. That is true. That's what they're saying, timing. They're talking about timing. Yes. Both wrote works enjoyed wide popularity. Yes, both had a comparable, they are said mass leadership. Both are popular. We already know that Wayne Woodward lectures are popular and Thomas Paine also has a mass leadership. Yes. Both exhibit an understanding of relevance of historical evidence. Yes, we are talking about historical evidence. That is like, like Paine, Woodward. So that is also yes. The works of both had significant effects on events following their publications. Yes, we are talking about the events. We are talking about the historical events, is it not? So we'll write a yes beside it. Both were able to set aside worries about historical anachronism. No, they were not able. No, uh, when when Woodward did not set uh, worries aside, it's a Thomas Paine who said, you know what? I'm not a historian, so I don't care about historical anachronism. So that's clearly a no, which should be the correct answer. Right? So that's how we go by answering this question. Accept a question. Oh, you always do this. You knock up accept and you say which of the following are the similarities, right? And answer choice with no is the correct answer. That's how we go about doing this uh, question. Okay. But this react part is important. The react part is super, 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 super important. If you're able to do that, then uh, you'll be able to do a lot more better uh, with the question than with the otherwise. Okay. Sorry for my writing. It's I know it's really bad. Uh, it's anachronism <coughs> written here. Okay. Again, this this diagram is just for you, right? It's not for anybody else. As long as you understand what you have written and know how to eliminate the answers to answers, that's pretty cool, right? The final answers are important. Okay. So how do you write? Doesn't matter, but you need to write. Okay. Instead of keeping that in the mind, let us quickly write it down, pin them down. You have a you have a sheet to write down. So write it down and then eliminate the answer choices. You no, know, make sure that you spend time on A. With practice, it does not take too much of time. Okay. Now I know a lot of people have this question on timing. Will you even have time to do all those things? Yes, you you will have time so ideally when i'm talking about the fire approach so basically i'll be spending around uh sorry i'll be spending around two minutes i'll be spending and i'll write in the next page so it'll be easy to understand when with respect to timing uh though it will not come to you just like that you have to practice 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 only then you will be able to do it uh so with respect to timing so ideally i'll be talking about around two 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 minutes 15 seconds uh for framework of the passage, right? Two minutes, two minutes, 15 seconds to 20 seconds. Interpret the question should take around 15 to 20 seconds because you need to identify the keyword in the question. Every question is about the keyword, right? And then react about this is where I'm spending significant amount and uh, amount of time. So almost one minute, 30 seconds will go here and around 30 seconds for elimination. If you spend time here, the elimination will take less time. If you don't spend time here, then you are you are taking time in elimination. You are taking time anyways, right? You are taking time anyways. Now use your time appropriately at the appropriate places, right? You know, if you don't do the react part, you're like going back and forth, back and forth between the answer choices and the passage, and that'll take too much of a time energy, right? You get drained out, okay? You get just drained out, okay? You'll not be able to do that, okay? So you spend rather time here at the react part the elimination takes hardly any time. So we're talking about what around two minutes, 20 seconds per question, which is a fair amount of time to manage the reading comprehension. Okay. Great. Now let us do a couple of more questions uh, quickly today. I got 10 more minutes now. So I'm going to do a couple of more questions quickly. The attitude, the next question, question number five, essentially talks about the attitude. Right, essentially talks about attitude. Attitude is a like tone question, right? Attitude of the author of the passage, attitude of the author of the passage toward the work of C. Van Woodward is best described as attitude. Remember, I always said the 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 answer. I don't know. I mean, if you guys have attended one of my previous sessions, uh, where I spoke about general questions uh, per se, where I spoke about primary purpose and attitude, there I mentioned. 95% uh, of the times your attitude question or tone question, the answer will be mild positive. Okay, the answer will be mild positive without even really going back and reading and understanding the uh, 
uh, passage, you can still answer this question. Your answer should be mild passage. It cannot be extreme positive. It cannot be extreme negative. It cannot be negative at all. It needs to be mild, mild, mild positive. So let us see if it answers why is that mild positive. Okay, answer to is a respectful regard. Okay, okay, we can keep it. It says, okay, I have respect for you. I have regard for you. I may hate you, but I have respect for you. Okay, that's great. Qualified approbation. This is also kind of okay for now, so I'll keep it. I'll come back to it a little later. Implied skepticism. Skepticism is kind of a negative word, so I want to stay away from negatives. Uh, pointed criticism. Again, criticism is also negative, so I'm going to stay away from that. Fervent advocacy. No, there's no, there's no fervent advocacy is happening, right? So that also gone. So it's been A and B. It's been A and B. Uh, respectable regarding qualified approbation. B is a very close answer, okay? Uh, because of approbation. Approbation author did not do. Remember, who did the approbation? Martin Luther King did the approbation. Martin Luther King praised. It's not the author. Author said, look. I understand. Okay, fine. No problem. I see that Martin Luther King likes your book. So he has a respect. Okay, he has a respect. He, 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 there is no approbation from the author of this particular passage. For Martin Luther King, yes, approbation means praise. Right? For Martin Luther King, yes. But I'm not talking from the... Uh, we, are, we need to talk from the author's point of view. Author's point of view, yeah, I can see Martin Luther King said your book is good so okay cool i i respect it right so therefore we eliminate the answer choice b hence a would be the correct answer for this okay a is the correct answer for this particular question <clears throat> okay call it uh, with a respectful regard yeah, okay i have a respect for you i have regards for you that's it it's not that i'm supporting what you're doing but i have respect for you you got what i'm saying right you need not have to be in support but you can still have respect Correct? No, so that's what it is. Right. <clears throat> so I drink a lot of water actually when I speak. So, <clears throat> okay. Now let's go to the next one. Yeah, the last one on this particular thing, the sixth question, where it talks about each of the following bits describes a new idea. This is again a brilliant question. Actually, I love this question. Which of the following bits describes a new idea expressed by expressed by uh, what is that? Uh, Wayne Woodward. Correct, no? Right? In the university, in, in, in his University of Virginia lectures in 1954. Okay? The brilliant, brilliant question. I like this question actually speaking. So let's see how to approach this particular question. Okay? So the lecture that he made in University of Virginia in 1954 is again on the in the second paragraph, right? Towards the beginning, right? So let us go there and try to read it and understand it, and then we'll come back to this answering the questions. Okay. So let us see what it says. So let's take a look at it. It says that when it were delivered lecture series at the University of Virginia, the challenged, okay, these lecture series. Again, I'm going to write the similar one, just rewriting it. He challenged the prevailing dogma. He challenged the prevailing dogma concerning concerning history, continuity, and uniformity of, <coughs> of racial segregation. Okay, and in the south, in south. Very important. He argued that he also argued that Jim Crow laws, Jim Crow laws of the late 19th and 20th century, not only he says, sorry, not only codified to traditional practice, but also, but also, what do you do? But also a determined effort, but also a determined effort to erase. The progress made by the blacks. Progress made by blacks. Right? Okay, Jim Crow laws are really, really bad, man. They not only codify traditional practice, but they also raise the progress made by the black people. Wonderful. Now let's see which answer choices would be wrong based on this. Okay. Answer choice A. Southern racial segregation. Uh, was continuous and uniform. That's not what he's saying. He actually challenged the dogma, right? So that's not what it is. So A is gone. 
black people were considerable made considerable progress only after now remember i don't know uh, if you any of you attended the previous session the 16 words try to stay away from these guys only please stay away from that as much as possible okay stay away from that no then jim crow legislation was a conventional nature no he is not talking about the conventional he is not all saying that they are conventional nature he is saying they are bad right so that is gone jim crow laws did not go as far as codify as far in codifying traditional practice as they might have no i mean he is not talking about the extent to which it codified he said it not only codified but also made an effort to erase the progress made by the black people can okay, i right? so that is also damn wrong answer to e jim crow laws did much more merely reinforce tradition of segregation that's what i not only codified the traditional practice but also erased made an effort to erase the progress made by the blacks so e is the correct answer you see that right that's how it needs to be followed follow the process it's not very difficult follow the process you follow the process even the difficult this is hard passage right the hard passage you know people get around 40 50 percent accuracy in here right but if you follow the process you see it is it is super easy it is not that difficult right if you start thinking from the gmat from the from the way the gmat thinks then you will be able to answer the questions but if you try to put too much of logic do overthinking into that you will not only waste your time energy and effort but there is high chance and you will not you will have uh, you will not get that particular question uh, right in addition you will also lose out of the time which means to say that you will not be able to complete the exam the last set of questions you will only you will only taking and finishing it off right you will mismanage the time if follow the process things can become super easy once you do this react part right once you do this part okay you are not going to go back to the passage and this requires practice this requires a good amount of practice if you practice it if you practice it you will be able to do it much 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 more better okay right okay cool <clears throat> so that's that uh, unfortunately i was not given too much of time today uh, i would love to do another passage but i was not given too much of a time uh, but uh, uh, i'll come back i'll come back soon sometime in the middle of the august to come back with a uh 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 the more passages more harder passages actually there are a bunch of passages i see them on gmat club which are harder so i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to come back with a lot of such passages and i'm going to do more passages with you i want to make sure that each one of you enjoy doing reading and comprehension and get a super duper accuracy okay perfect chalo then thank you so much for your time today and thank you so much for attending the event i will uh, catch up with you very soon you guys have a great saturday evening and an amazing sunday okay chalo then thank you so much take care bye bye